Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be doing a brief stock analysis on Boeing and just so you know up front, this is not going to be any kind of deep dive into the financials but more so me just giving my opinion on the company as well as the industry. I like to start off by taking a look at the five-year chart and as you can see here they're up um, just 8% in the last five years but that's due to a sharp decline since March because they're an aircraft manufacturer and the entire airline industry is still uh, in a major downturn since they're being really affected by COVID. But if you do look at their um, previous high before COVID, they were up 130% in the last five years. And I will try to explain um, throughout this video why I think they could easily do that in the next five years. And then if you look at the stock in just the last six months, um, it's up 30%. And then if you were to look at it from its previous low, uh, I think it bottomed out at about $91 in March. So it's up almost 50% from its previous low. And here you can see their quarter over quarter revenue and earnings. And as you can expect, there's a large um, decrease in revenue and earnings in quarter two of 2020. But what's a little bit concerning to me, at least, is the decrease in revenue um, quarter over quarter from quarter three of 2019 to quarter one of 2020. And those were problems with the 737 which I'm not really going to get into, but I did talk about that in the last um, the last Boeing video I did about six months ago. So if you are curious about the 737 problems, be sure to go and check it out. But hopefully there's no long-term repercussions as a result of that, and they're um, on the back end of their 737 problems. And before I continue with the video, I just wanted to go ahead and share my position. I have just four shares, which is less than 3% of my portfolio. I bought two shares in the upper 90s and then um, two shares at about 155, I think. And next up, I wanted to take a look at their research report overview from Morningstar. They're given a four out of five star rating and um, for their fair value, I would even go far as to say they have a five out of five star rating just because they are um, around $160 right now. And then if you look at their economic moat, it says that it has a wide economic moat, which is absolutely true just because they have the capabilities of what only a com couple of companies in the entire world can do. Uh, uncertainty is very high. Uh, there's a lot of talk of a second wave of COVID right now, which could definitely hurt them. And then it says they have standard steward stewardship. I would actually say um, it's subpar stewardship just because they're having management problems, manufacturing problems, um, aircraft problems. I mean, you name it, they're, they've had issues with it, which is arguable why they could have a lower fair value or for maybe why they should have a lower fair value. But they did have a $360 stock price before um, the 737 MAX problem really blew up. So I think $264 fair value is a pretty good price. Something else that's really important here is that they're in a duopoly. There's only two um, mass scale manu aircraft manufacturers in the entire world, one being Airbus and Boeing. I actually have a handful of aircraft, uh, sorry, Airbus shares as well. And there's a number of governments as well as uh, smaller aircraft manufacturers all throughout the world, but nothing on the scale of Boeing and Airbus. And for this reason alone, I would say Boeing is going to be okay and they're going to be able to uh, increase their revenues if they're just given enough time. Another good point is that they do make U.S. military aircraft, which gives them really hefty um, U.S. contracts. And if they were actually ever in serious trouble of going bankrupt, uh, the U.S. government would bail them out or give them aid before they got to that point. And there's also the argument that they could go bankrupt and then restructure into another similar company, but I don't really don't think that's gonna happen either. Next up, I wanna talk about a few points by the Bulls and the Bears by analysts of Morningstar. This first point says that Boeing has a large backlog that covers several years. Um, and right now there's a lot of delayed revenue um, with delayed orders or airlines aren't wanting new planes right now just because demand is so low, but that revenue is gonna be coming in eventually. And there's always gonna be a demand for um, Boeing aircraft products unless some kind of crazy innovation comes along to replace it. And then the next point is kind of a two in one. The first part is that they're well positioned to benefit from emerging market growth. And what I kind of take that to mean is that there's new really popular uh, cities that people want to get to, but it's currently kind of difficult to get there. So there's a lot of demand for more aircraft for airports in Central America, uh, South America, and Africa, as well as a lot of other countries throughout the entire world for Boeing aircrafts. And then the second part of that is that there's a large replacement cycle over the next two decades. 
So say the lifespan is 30 years for their aircraft. I don't know if the different aircrafts have different lifespans, um, but in the next 20 years, a lot of the airlines are gonna need to replace their aircrafts because they're at the end of their uh, lifespan. So they're gonna have to order more from Boeing. And then the last point I kind of already talked about with the duopoly, but there's really not even anybody on the horizon for being a large aircraft manufacturer in the next five years. And next up, I want to talk about a few bearish points. Uh, the first one is that the 737 MAX still remains grounded. They're still working out those problems, and it's almost worked in their favor that there's been a lower demand for aircraft during the last eight months or so. Uh, and then the next point is that it could take years for Boeing to recover from the carnage caused by COVID. And then it says at the end there, something I've been talking about with the different airlines, that uh, video conferences could replace business travel. So there's a possibility that previous business travel may not reach their previous highs for several years or even a decade. But uh, demand for flights is eventually going to return and people, uh, or different airlines rather, are going to have to order new um, Boeing aircraft in the future. And then the last point is that aircraft development is notoriously susceptible to delays and cost overruns. And I would even add on to that with all of the different delays for aircraft um, orders right now and all of the other problems, uh, this is actually going to be worse than it has been historically, not better. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to come and check out my channel as I do do these types of videos for a ton of different stocks. Uh, subscribe for more content and thank you so much for watching to the very end.